All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this workshop. My name is Kaz. I'm in developer relations at Slack, and I'm one of the Slack SDK maintainers. In this workshop, we're going to build Slack up from the beginning to the end. I will start by creating new Slack up configuration and uh, spin up a local web server to receive information from Slack. And we'll be implementing the features one by one. And we will see how it works in an actual Slack workspace. And in this workshop, we're going to use this project template, git.io slash API days Slack, that is a GitHub repository. Uh, so please access this shortened URL and uh, grab the project template and run the application on your local machine. Uh, also, this project template is uh, uh, compatible with glitch.com, the code sandbox.com. So if you prefer using uh, those uh, platforms, that's also possible. All right, so in this workshop, we're going to build a help desk workflow app. Uh, you can use, uh, you can implement uh, the similar things with workflow builders and other solutions, but uh, the application we're going to build in this workshop is more like interactive applications, like having multiple steps in the models and the setting notifications freely. So let's see how it works. So here is, oh, just a moment. Can I get a little bit larger? Right. Um, so first off, uh, we're going to use Global Showcat. The Global Showcat is a quick and handy way to start a new workflow and operations from anywhere in Slack. Uh, you can click Showcat menu as in a part of uh, the Textual Composer, or you can search a shortcut in a, a search bar at the top of Slack. And I click Showcat and open the model. This is the first step of the application. And then after that, um, the application provides a multiple step models. The first step is the simple kind of select menu uh, to select, to choose a category from that. And uh, once, a, once an end user, end user chooses a category, uh, automatically that the model is transformed to the next step, uh, corresponding to the uh, selected category here, like this. And then when the user submit the data, okay, like this, that we can, you can have any types of custom input validations uh, because you can implement that on your server side. So this is a kind of length check for title and also the checks for uh, the due date. The due date must be in the future. And then once we get the valid submission from users, uh, we can send a notification to the triage channel or team channel. And also we can send DM to the submitter and also, if the request has approval for it, um, we can send the uh, confirmation to the submitter as well. And as a bonus, uh, I will touch uh, Home tab. This is a relatively new feature, a little bit. So Home tab is a dedicated space for per user. So each user has its, their own uh, custom view in a Home tab. And uh, this this demo shows uh, quickly show it, uh, this demo shows uh, the, the history of the submitter, uh, the submission by the user. So this is the application we're going to build within uh, 50 minutes. And um, to build this application, we're going to use uh, most of the key Slack latest key Slack platform features. Uh, like they are a uh, block kit, global shortcut, models, and home tab. Um, Blockkit is a Slack's UI framework uh, that is very useful for building interactive and rich user interface. Now from the use Slack app developer perspective, um, the Blockkit is just kind of the predefined JSON data structure. So as your as your application, your, as your API, API call complies with uh, the predefined JSON data structure, uh, Slack server side and client side properly render those uh, user interface in both uh, desktop and mobile properly. So this means your application can be um, OS platform agnostic as long as you use a block kit for the user interface. <laughs> the second one is global shortcut. Um, as I already mentioned, a shortcut is a very useful way uh, to start a workflow from anywhere in Slack. And uh, typically, we use uh, this feature for opening a model. Uh, so uh, users can start some interaction with the application by uh, selecting something or inputting some de textual data. 
and a model is uh, a little bit similar to dialogue we we have for wrong time but the key difference is a model can use blocked component in it so uh, we can easily build more interactive and rich user interface uh, utilizing both no blocked components and also another benefit is we can have a transition in a, a model flow unlike uh, dialogue so it's pretty easy to implement in a multiple step and the confirm multiple step you know model flow and the showing the confirmation page and whatever all right so that's the features we're gonna use and how to build this application we are going to use uh, both for javascript which is uh, a full stack slack up framework we released both for javascript last year uh, one and a half years ago and this is a javascript framework and that is optimized for taking full advantage of the platform features, particularly interactivity features and events API. And with both, uh, you don't not only utilizing those latest features, but also you don't you won't be bothered by the you know, Slack very specific uh, non-functional requirements. For example, your Slack app need to verify every single request from Slack because your API endpoint need to be exposed to the internet. This means. Of course, Slack sends a request to the endpoint, but not only Slack, but also any other random clients may send requests for some reasons. So the distinguishing the Slack's request from others is really crucial for security. And another thing is <coughs> the Slack has several features and uh, each feature may send a little bit different data structure. So dispatching those data uh, to the right code pathways uh, kind of already parsed data structure is really, um, important but sometimes it takes uh, extra effort on your code so with your if you you uh, when you use bolt you don't need to implement such on your own the similarly uh, bolt has a kind of dispatching features that quite similar to uh, xpress.js routing feature so it, your your code could be a very concise uh, with bolt's uh, dispatching features and other some some other things so uh, with bolt your slack app development can be even more productive. Then in this workshop, we're going to use uh, both for JavaScript, but both is available for Java and the Kotlin, and also very soon in Python. Python, both for Python is still in alpha, but we're going to release the beta version very soon, and the GA version will be released within a few months. Right, so that's the explanation. We're going to use, uh, we're going to build a helpless workflow app, and then we're going to use some latest features like uh, uh, shortcut, uh, blockade shortcut, the model, the home tab, and uh, we're gonna use both for JavaScript. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is uh, clone this project. So cut and paste this command or download the zip file on your local machine and download it. The first thing we need to confirm is make sure your Node.js version is not too old. So the, this is a, the oldest version we support. So 10.13 is not new version, but if you are using old, older version than this, uh, upgrade Node.js version first. And the next step is npm install. All right, and uh, I'm gonna use uh, Visual Studio Code. Right, so this is a project. The project is uh, quite simple. So we have only two scripts like this, and no other build tools. It's quite simple, just Node.js project. And uh, right, just a moment. Okay, so it's under the source directly, we have index.js. And this workshop, basically, we're going to touch only this file and also .m file as well. So this file is still empty, kind of blank project, just starting the application. But we're gonna implement four listeners uh, to uh, to implement all the features one by one, right? And here's a solution. Just this is a complete version of the app. So if you stack with something, that check the difference with uh, the solution. Just may be helpful. All right, and also under the models directly, there are several model examples that you can cut and paste this JSON data to work for, you know, Rocket Builder. So, Brocade Builder is very useful uh, browser too, so you can access 
appslack.com slash rocket builder and cut and paste this JSON later. Uh, before cut and paste, please choose a model preview. And cut and paste, you can see the right preview here. And if you modify this like this, uh, automatically update it. So this is really useful uh, to check how it looks like uh, before embedding the JSON data to your application. Anyway, so um, go back to the readme. The readme has a comprehensive guide uh, how to implement this, but uh, uh, we're going to follow the instruction in the source code uh, now. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is creating new Slack app configuration. At this point, we don't have any Slack apps. So creating Slack app and configure Slack app properly and install the application to a workspace and get access token to call web APIs. So to do this, we're gonna, uh, we go to API slack.com slash apps. So this URL, and I don't have any apps yet with this account. So create a new app and uh, app name, this is a, just name of the application, help desk app. We can change this later, uh, help desk app. And development workspace is the workspace that owns this application. So only for development workspace, you don't need to implement a standard auth flow to issue a auth access token. So um, this is really useful for kind of internal tools. Like, okay, I'm, I'm not planning to distribute these Slack apps to any other workspaces. In that case, just using uh, development workspace and uh, installing the application to the workspace just click in the button in the browser. And you cannot change this workspace afterwards. So please be careful to choose the right one. <coughs> if you choose, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> if you choose a wrong one, uh, delete the application and you need to recreate, uh, create a new app with the right uh, workspace. All right, so create the app. So this is a brand new app and then no configurations yet. And uh, in this workshop, to so go back to the index.js, uh, we're going to set four bot token permissions, uh, bot token scopes. Go to the auth and permission page, uh, this one, auth and permission page, and click this and scroll down a little bit <coughs> to the scopes. And the scopes has two types of scopes the bot token scopes and the user token scopes. In this workshop, we're gonna use only bot token scopes. Um, and uh, for most use cases, you will be using only bot token scopes, but if your application really need to do something on behalf of uh, end users, the each users, uh, you may use user token scopes. Like if, you look, if your application would like to access uh, each user's search results, uh, in that case, uh, you need to have the permission for it. But uh, it's not so common case. So basically, we're gonna use only uh, you. You will be using only bot token scopes. All right. So we're gonna add four scopes. The first one is commands. The commands is a permission to add shortcuts and or slash commands to the workspace. Um, so with this permission, we're gonna add a new global shortcut to the workspace. Right. So the second one is chat right. This is very basic functionality of Slack bot user. Uh, with this permission, this app support user can post a message in a channel or in a direct message. Um, but uh, with this permission, uh, the bot user need to be invited to the channel or need to be a member of the uh, channel or conversation. So for convenience, uh, I like to add uh, optional chat right dot public permission as well. So with this permission, as long as the channel is a public channel, uh, the bot user don't need to join the channel uh, just for sending notifications or just for uh, posting the message. And, and the last one is I am right. I am right is permission to start a new direct message with uh, the people in the workspace. So in this workshop, and this application is going to send a DM to the submitter and also the approver so to start a direct message with those people, we're gonna use this permission. Right, so we set four permissions, commands, chat right, chat right dot public, and I am right. And before installing the application, let's configure the bot user and 
enable tunnel, uh, enable a home tab a little bit uh, beforehand. Um, all right, so up name is a little bit weird. Just a moment. All right, so up name and help desk. And also you can set uh, application icon like this. All right. And go back to the up home. Um, this is this part is about the bot user's permission, uh, confirm uh, appearance and the configuration. And so the default name of the bot user is automatically determined by the application name. So let's use uh, more like a bot ish name, the help desk bot. This is internal ID, but probably the similar thing would be better. And also, on the home tab is not enabled by default. So let's turn on this feature. All right. So uh, we're going to add the global shortcut in this part later. But uh, now we can install the application to the workspace. So go to Settings, uh, Install App, and click Install App to Workspace button. All right. So this is the uh, auth, auth confirmation page. This page tells us uh, this application isn't going to use these permissions. Um, so the, we need to confirm uh, the, the, the permission is sufficient. And uh, actually, these four things are co uh, corresponding to the permissions you know, bot token scope. So we configured on that admin page. So this is a chat right, this is chat right public, and this is IM right, and this is uh, uh, commands. So all these things are expected. So let's click the allow button here. And then we get a, a success message and we get a both user auth access token. Uh, we're gonna use this access token for every single web API calls, like opening a model, posting a message and fetching information from the workspace. Right, so what we do here is uh, we created new Slack app and uh, configured permissions properly and uh, customized a little bit, um, like uh, enabling home tab and uh, changing the name of the bot user and add the app icon. And then install the application to the development workspace and we got the bot, uh, bot access token. So next step is to configure two credentials. They are uh, bot, access to, bot user access token and the signing secret. So bot access token is this one and so here's the example. So copy this file and the rename as just.m and copy this value and paste it. And another credential is a signing secret. So you can access signing secret at uh, basic information at up credentials and signing secret. So this value is a secret key shared with only Slack. So this this secret key will be used for um, uh, verification, uh, verifying the, the incoming request from Slack. So the incoming every single incoming request from Slack has uh, the special uh, request header named X Slack signature and X Slack timestamp. So the generating the logic to generate the signature is shared with only Slack platform. So only the application and the Slack platform can generate the right uh, signature and verify the signature. So go to the basic information and scroll down to up credentials. And this is the secret, oh, sorry, signing secret. And the click show button and the copy this value. Uh, 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 where's that? All right, and the save it. Right, okay. So we've configured .m file and now the application is ready to uh, spin up. So before running the application, let me explain this part a little bit. So the app class is a very kind of basic class. We often use this class to register new middleware and listener functions. And also app instance embodies a start method, uh, has a start method and it, it has internal kind of ex embedded web server. Uh, by default, it depends on, relies on Express.js. So just running, uh, just calling start method this starts a new web, web server process. And uh, this is a, a tiny utility I created. So 
we use use method to register middleware to uh, app instance. So this method uh, just print out print uh, the context object and payload in request. This is really useful for local debugging, but I don't recommend uh, enabling these these types of features in production. Right. So uh, this code runs process like this. The once we started the application, the application uh, accepts a request from uh, Slack in this port and the, in this path. All right, so let's run this command. So this is a thin lopper of uh, node mon. So um, uh, this command automatically detects the file changes in your project and uh, reflect uh, the changes to the right app. All right, so we don't see any errors here. This means uh, we successfully uh, configured uh, credentials. All right, so we spin up the server. So the next step is we're gonna build four, we're gonna add four listeners to the application. Um, the first thing is we're gonna add the global shortcut on its listener. Um, so to turn on the interactive feature, we go to the Slack app configuration page again. Oh, just a moment. So this page and, all right. So go to interactivity and shortcuts. And by default, this feature is not enabled. So to toggle to turn on this feature, and then we will see uh, request URL and the shortcuts. What is request URL? Request URL is a public endpoint to receive uh, the payloads from Slack and the request from Slack. There's a HTTP request uh, including um, the JSON data structure in, in its uh, request body. But of course, this is a kind of local process. So to receive the information from Slack to connect with Slack platform, we're going to use uh, Angrok as a toning software in this workshop. Um, if you don't have Angrok yet, uh, you can download the client software from the download page. Uh, you can start using Angrok for free. And it, they offer us paid plans as well, but uh, you can start for free anyways. And uh, this works very simply, uh, kind of uh, establishing, uh, establishing a public endpoint and the uh, request to the endpoint to uh, forward the request to uh, the local process. And in this in this script, uh, Anglog forwards the request to the process running on local machine and uh, the process listens on 3000 port. Okay, let's do the similar here. Just the Anglog HTTP 3000. And I get the London subdomain here. Now we can access this URL. And also by doing this, we can have uh, the inspector here. So this is really useful. So don't cut and paste the HTTP version of the URL. So HTTPS URL will be used for request URL. And the path is Slack slash events. The last part is plural. All right, so this is a valid uh, Lexis URL, and we're going to add the shortcuts. There are two types of shortcuts, the global and mid, uh, message shortcut. Uh, the message shortcut is a part of a message menu. Let me just a moment. So like, so here is a message menu, and I click this, and we have so many, uh, not so many, but there's some menus here. There's, this is uh, one of the shortcut. So click this, shows uh, the model, uh, the printing, the JSON data in a model. This is a very simple one, but a really useful um, message shortcut. So the basically when we use a uh, message shortcut, uh, just.
accidentally get sorry for that. Can you hear me now? Okay, thank you for that, confirming that. All right, so I, I implemented a uh, um, shortcut listener. And uh, what we have the issue is uh, creating new shortcut listener and uh, acknowledge a request and open the model with the API method. Also, we can have a wait here. All right, so this is the first step. And the second step is go back to the workspace and uh, select this that we get the request again. So this is a uh, uh, block actions payload, and uh, this is the actual payload, uh, no, action. So uh, this action ID is really important. So we get the, this um, action with the selected option here. So we'd like to dispatch uh, uh, the, uh, the step two with the given the selected category here. So uh, let me explain a little bit with the complete version of it. So here's the, the complete version of the listener function of the action. So the action list action ID is a help desk request model, uh, category selection, a little bit long, but explicit, being explicit is very good. And we're going to acknowledge the request first. And after that, we can extract uh, the selected uh, category here. So this is the payload. So the actions has, action has uh, multiple actions, but we, when we use action here, uh, this one is only, only this one will be ex extracted as the value. So under the action, uh, we have selected option and the value. And uh, this is a category. So in this case, it's a laptop. It can be mobile and other. So we just have uh, the if else statement here and the building blocks uh, in correspondence, correspondence with uh, the selected category. And then uh, we're gonna use views update. This is uh, another API method to update existing model. So open, uh, views open start a new model and the views update updates already open the model. And we're gonna add the view ID and hash in the view object as the parameters. The view ID is the existing views um, ID and go back to the payload. Then at the top level, we have view and under the view, we have ID and the ID is this one. And we set this value to as a parameter and the hash value will be used for avoiding the waste condition with a simultaneous request. <coughs> and the view is, um, JSON data structure uh, represents uh, the JSON, uh, no way, um, the model. So the step two, it looks like uh, this one. So step two, I can show you this moment. Step two is like this. So it has summit button and also it has back button at the top and also more kind of more blocks here. So four blocks for mobile and the we can customize for the other category. So in the case of laptop, it has only two uh, two blocks, but the again model a mobile mobile has more variation, like not only text input but also um, select menu and user select and the date picker. All right. So. Uh, Allow me to cut and paste this code here. All right, and, uh, and click this. And then we got a payload again. And uh, we, oh, this is incorrect. Okay, I will fix that later. Um, and the model has been updated. And uh, we can click back button, but it doesn't work yet because we haven't implemented uh, the listener function for it. But now it is working, like clicking this and the choosing other, we have other step two. So it is working now. So what we do here is um, 
we are the new action listener. And uh, for action listener, we use action ID, not callback ID. And uh, the logic is like just acknowledging that and uh, dispatching the request uh, in correspondence with a category and uh, update the existing model. All right, so the next thing is quite similar. So the next thing is um, adding another action, uh, action listener for the back button. So, all right. So when I when when we click back button here, we got request like this. Oh, it's already working. Sorry. Um, right. And where's that? So this is the payload. So we got the request action ID. Help this request model reset, and uh, we add the listener for it. So the reset and the acknowledge the request first and then update the model again with the step one model, the category selection model. It's also possible to kind of transfer uh, the hidden value as a private metadata, but uh, this, part, this application is quite simple. All right, so now we, uh, we can go and do the back and forth operations like this. All right, it is working now. So what we did here is exactly the same with, almost the same with as uh, the previous one. We add the uh, action listener using the action method. And this is an action ID and acknowledge request and update the model with the step one model, the category section model. All right, so the last part is uh, how to handle the data submission from uh, the, uh, from the um, model. So click this, just a moment. Submit this, the, we got a payload, but uh, we didn't time, uh, we didn't respond to it. So it's timed out. So we had uh, some trouble connecting, but uh, uh, this is a payload, a little bit long, but the view submission type, and it has view, and the view has uh, its state, and the state has values. In the case of, uh, this model, it has only two input blocks. So that's the reason why there are two inputs here. And uh, under the values, this is a block ID in a blockit JSON data, and this is action ID. The block, it, block ID need to be unique across the model, but uh, we can reuse uh, the same, fix the value for action ID. So title and a laptop. And if, if the input block is a simple text block or text area, the value will be, uh, uh, set as a value, but in the case of select menu, uh, it can be a selected option, you know, and, and it has a label here, and also it's uh, underlying value here. If the case of uh, the mobile, it has more variation, and select in this, right, and we got a request again. The state has four values like this, and the title is the same, and OS the sec is a static select. And the user select uh, sends uh, a user ID as a string, and the data picker sends uh, the, the date as a string data. But uh, that the field name is not value, the selected date. So there are several variations, but uh, you can refer to uh, the API document to what it looks like. And also you can have multiple select, like multi, multi user select. In our case, this can be a selected users. And the similarly, multi static select, this can be a selected options and the value could be a um, array instead of just single value. Right, so that's the, that, that is the communication with uh, model submission. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use view method to register new or listener function. And let me explain uh, with a complete example first. Uh, uh, before that, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, extracting data from this submitted data and uh, have the input validation rules and acknowledge the request and send the notification to the people concerned and update model, uh, no, update home tab. All right, so this is the implementation of that. So firstly, uh, we can extract the state values. So 
top level, we have view like this. And under the view, we have state and values. So this is the root uh, um, of the data. And this views has a block ID and action ID. And under the action ID, there are several patterns like just value or selected option or uh, selected date and selected user or plural. And we extracted these values. And after that, we can have custom uh, input validation rules here. Uh, I have two things, two validation rules here. They are quite simple. So if there's a, a title in a submission data, uh, we can check the length like this. So the title must be longer than five characters. If not, we can associate a single error message to block ID. And similarly, if we have due date and the due date is not a future date, uh, we can associate the error message to the block ID. And if the error is not empty, we can return uh, uh, the value as an ATP response this way. So uh, we need to have response action errors and errors object. So by doing this, um, uh, Slack or Mercury um, binds the errors to the corresponding uh, input blocks. So let's see how it works. Uh, uh, uh. It's a little bit long method. All right, so uh, in this, this is the past state. You click this. Uh, right, so it is working now. So we got these data, and this is incorrect, and also this is incorrect. So we returned error, uh, response action errors, and uh, the message is binded in a UI. All right, so that's a validation. But instead of uh, submitting body data, iPhone, and, right. uh, we can close the model. To close the model, we can just acknowledge other requests. This means, okay, we are done with uh, this, this model, so we can safely close this model. If you'd like to continue with working with the user, you can send uh, other response actions like update and push. Uh, in that case, um, Slack doesn't close uh, the model. Instead of that, the updating the model or push means and, uh, pushing the other model on top of the existing model. So it's also possible. But simply returning empty string, uh, empty body means uh, we can close this model. Right, so that's, but uh, probably we, before closing this model, we can do something like storing the data to the database or communicating with external services like uh, ticket management services and systems. But no, this is quite a simple example. And uh, this is a simple uh, notification message template. So just, just showing that all the, all the fields submitted. And we're gonna send a notification to a cha one channel and two, two, two persons. Uh, the first one is sending notification to triage channel, help desk to triage channel. So instead of general, or triage help desk. And this utility does uh, this one. Uh, in the case of a channel, just post a message using client, web client, chat.pop message, the channel ID, and the text object, uh, text data. That if, if they're given the ID is a user ID, that before sending a message, uh, opening the DM and uh, send a chat, uh, send a message to the DM's channel ID. And the second one is a, a confirmation um, message to the submitter. And the third one is if the submission has a prover, like mobile, uh, mobile device replacement, uh, this, this, mess, this sends a, a the request to the approver to confirm this. Now, lastly, um, the uh, home tab is quite simple feature. So basically, each user has uh, their own custom view, and uh, the managing the data is just publishing the, the latest view uh, for each user. So we use views publish method, 
uh, with uh, the home type home type view and with the uh, array of the blocks array of the block kit component so in this example just showing the history of the submission for the user all right so let's submit this data then now we got the data oh all right so sorry okay i understand it but anyway so um we got a notification to the triage channel and we can check this like okay i will triage this and also i got a message as a submitter and the error message is that i chose the bot user as a approver so that failed so let me try again and uh, so mobile yeah, android approver need to be will fold and the future date the submit again and uh, we get the same error same message similar message and click home tab uh all right probably the data have been updated so in memory only one submission here but and this is a message in our tree channel again and uh, here is the wheel for the slack we forward also get the notification from the app that this tells that we need your approval for this request. So this is the app we built today, and that's that's all. And go back to README. Let me summarize the workshop. So we created a new new Slack app configuration, and uh, 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 configured proper permissions, and uh, spin up the local web server and then Glock and uh, implemented for listeners to receive the information from Slack and taking some actions. And it is working in a Slack workspace. Right, thank you for joining this workshop. And uh, if you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate, uh, reach out to me or make uh, create some issues on this uh, GitHub repository. Um, yeah, I hope you, you, some, you learned something from this. And our director, Bill Douglas, is going to make a keynote speech very soon. So let's join the workshop, uh, no, keynote, and enjoy the rest of the conference. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye.